Question 1. Find the resistance of a 240 volt electric heater if a current of 4 amps flows through it. To solve this, all we need is Ohm's law. V equals IR. Now, we already know V, and we already know I. What we want to find out is R, so we need to rearrange this equation. We can, use, uh, we can divide both sides of the equation by I to produce this equation. R, the resistance of the heater, equals V, the voltage through it, divided by I, the current that it draws. So, substituting in our numbers, we have 240 over 4, which gives us a resistance of 60 ohms. Question 2. A 10 kilo ohm resistor, that is 10,000 ohms, carries a current of 0 0.6 milliamps, with 0 0.6 thousandths of an amp. What is the voltage across the resistor? Now in this case, we don't even need to rearrange Ohm's equation. V equals IR, and substituting 0 0.6 milliamps for I, and 10,000 ohms for R, we have an equation that looks like this. So here's our milliamps. Rem remember that a milliamp is one thousandth of an amp. And here's our kilo ohms, because a kilo ohm is one thousand ohms. So uh, using a calculator to figure this out for us, we get an answer of six volts. So this is the drop across the resistor. Question three. A resistor is marked 1.2 kilo ohms, that is, 1,200 ohms, and can carry a maximum current of 0 0.003 amps. That's 3 milliamps. What voltage would cause it to carry its maximum current? So here we're trying to find V once again. So we don't need to rearrange our equation. Now in order to produce the maximum current, we need to substitute the maximum current and the resistance of the resistor into this equation. Doing that leaves us with this equation, which simplifies to 3.6 volts. So a power supply of 3.6 volts connected to just this resistor will cause it to carry its maximum current. A voltage any higher than this may damage the resistor. Question 4. A wire with a resistance of 1.5 ohms, it's a low resistance, but then again, wires tend to have low resistances, carries a current of 25 amps to a piece of heavy machinery. Find the voltage drop across the wire. All right, let's figure this one out. Uh, we're going to be using Ohm's equation, voltage equals I times R. We have a very large I and rather a small R. The voltage drop across the wire is going to be IR, which will be 25 times 1.5. That, of course, gives us an answer of 37.5 volts. So across the wire alone, we get a drop of 37.5 volts, rather a large amount. Now, if the voltage supply to the system is 240 volts, what voltage is left over to supply the machinery? So how do we figure this one out? Well, it's going to be the 240 volts we start with minus the 37.5 volts that we lose across the wire. So we lose 37.5 volts worth of potential of the charged particles moving through the wire. The potential they're left with will be 240 volts minus this potential, right? Our answer will simply be 240 minus 37.5. That means that we have 202.5 volts left to power the machinery. Question five. A school student conducts an experiment to calculate the current flowing in a small, low-power electric circuit in the lab. After doing some calculations, he determines that the current in the circuit is 25 amps. Is this a reasonable figure? Explain why or why not. Now, being able to answer a question like this is a very useful skill if you ever want to do experimental work in the lab. So what do you think? Is 25 amps reasonable? Is it too large or too small? Well, it's probably far too large. This is not a very reasonable figure. Even if we had 10 amps, we'd be getting a very large, large amount of energy being output from the circuit. And so it certainly wouldn't be classified as a small, low power electric circuit. Remember that one amp is already a high amount of current. 
and five amps is able to produce a large amount of light or heat energy. Remember that a car's headlight uses less than five amps to produce all that brightness. So if we were to measure a low power circuit and get 25 amps, then there's probably something wrong with our measurement or our calculations. The current in the student circuit is more likely to be perhaps 0.25 amps, or maybe even 25 milliamps. This might be likely because it's possible to calibrate the ammeter so that instead of measuring in amps, it might be measuring in milliamps. And that would explain why he's off by so much. Question six. When electric current flows through salty water, it is carried by positively charged and negatively charged ions. Do the two types of ion move in the same direction? Justify your answer. Now to answer this, we're gonna to have to think about what causes an electric current. Remember that if we have an electric current, we have a movement of charged particles. To form a movement of charged particles, we need them to be attracted or repelled from a particular charge. So suppose that to create a current, we put a big negatively charged plate here and a big positively charged plate here. Now, if we put a charged particle in between them, it'll be attracted to one of them, which means we will have electric current. Now, suppose we're in this situation and we have positively charged ions and negatively charged ions. So we have positive charges and negative charges. The negative charges will be attracted this way and repelled this way, but the positive charges will move in the opposite direction. So are they going to move in the same direction? Well, certainly not. You can see that they're going to move in quite the opposite direction. The positive charge will move in the direction that we expect the conventional current to flow in, and the negative charge will move in the opposite direction. When an electric current flows, it is caused by an electric field generated by a power supply. Positive and negative charges move in opposite directions if they're placed in the same electric field. And this means that the two types of ions will move in, in opposite directions in order to carry the current in the same direction. So that's the end of the questions. In this section, we've learned about electric current. We've learned about the charge carriers that carry electric current in various different conductors. And we've learned about what sort of numbers we might expect to see in various electrical circuits. Now these numbers can be quite helpful. If you get a number that seems quite off, don't forget to check your working out.